The storyline of Christmas at the Amish Bakery may seem obvious from the title alone, and it is, but frankly, I'm not sure how much more obvious the message needs to be for society to understand that we all need to put the Chris back in Christmas. By the way, I've rebranded Jesus Christ as simply Chris. It's more hot, more modern, more American, which is what American audiences really want. Jesus Christ sounds like your grandfather's Lord and Savior who loved telling stories and fish dinners. When I think of Chris, I think of a Messiah who is like SAG eligible, bartends at Rage, and maybe sells a little GHB on the side. Now that's somebody that I can and have followed into the desert for a long weekend. But as this faith-based TV movie points out, the Amish are somehow able to survive without all of the fancy trappings of the modern gay party boy, choosing instead to live a simple life free from technology in order to feel closer to Chris, the artist formerly known as Christ. Which at the end of the day is what all of us want because the Bible makes it really clear. To walk with Chris is to know true paradise. The trippy hallucinations, the group dinners with men who do not wear deodorant, the pronounced daddy issues that manifest themselves in really fun, glamorous ways. It's what everyone wants across religious groups. That's how Christmas at the Amish Bakery reminds me that other than my agnostic beliefs, lazy attitude, and complete lack of humility, I'm basically Amish without making it like Facebook official. And the same can be said for the love interest of our ex-Amish main character in this movie. She finds herself spending the holidays trying to save her job as a cookbook editor, trying to save her family's bakery in the Amish community, and trying to save a weird widowed children's book illustrator from the sad feelings that come from having accidentally killed his wife. See, now it's starting to sound pretty biblical, am I right? So get over here, I saved you a seat, and I'm saving your soul for Christmas. In today's Batteries Not Required or Even Allowed installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it down into different religious sects with similar beliefs, but vastly different ways of life. To look at each individual stanza and psalm and decide if it's worthy of the church group or if it's going to hell with the rest of the sinners. And you know that I love a faith-based holiday movie. It's like the way that I remember that the holidays are even like religious to begin with. I'm more about like the Coca-Cola Santa Claus as my Jesus Christ, but everybody has their own thing. As you can see, I'm here at my parents' home in undisclosed location, America. And in the interest of saving time, we're gonna breeze through this rather predictable and generic plot line because it's all pretty much well understood at this point. The woman returns to her hometown. The man has a kid who's like in his care, who she gets along with. and. The, then the, she's also got a secret thing to like save her job or for her career that we find out about. The only difference here is that this takes place, as the title would suggest, at an Amish bakery. And I have to thank my subscriber Docs and Roses for this suggestion, who enthusiastically pointed out that this whole movie was made for me. Natalie, thank you so much for the tip. You were right. This movie was made for me. The same way we were all cut from Chris's cloth. I love calling Jesus Christ Chris. It's like Chris Jenner. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more TV movie clip breakdowns like this. I know we got this Christmas one in right under the wire, or after the wire if you're watching this after Christmas. But either way, if you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button. That way you never miss new videos from me. I've got merch and a Patreon, and you don't want to miss it. So Christmas at the Amish Bakery begins as you might expect, intercutting between our working woman, Sarah, and her sister back on the Amish farm who's baking a pie. Her name's Rachel. Everybody loves Sarah. She's nice, even though she's no longer Amish. More on that later. But not all is well in cookbook editor land because, hey, their sales are down, and her boss lets her know, like, if we want to have a job in the new year, we need to launch a new cookbook. The boss notices this letter that uh, Sarah has from her Amish sister written in Pennsylvania Dutch. And Sarah's like, I don't know how to cook. I'm famously terrible at cooking. But my sister, she's great. They have a bakery. Girl, you never thought to bring that into your job as like an, an, even an idea. She is convinced to go to try to convince her sister, Rachel, to put these recipes into a cookbook uh, so that they can save their jobs for the next quarter. There's this weird detail where the boss is like the daughter of the like publisher himself and he's still gonna fire her because he's like, he apparently doesn't love her that much. 
but it really never becomes anything other than the motivation for why the boss is so cutthroat. Anyway, as Rachel drives to Amish Town, which is about six hours from wherever she lives in Chicago, she's listening to some fun music. Mm, and the fun music doesn't stop in this movie. Your peppermint kisses linger. Your voice has the power to You know what's fun for me? Visiting the website instrumentalholidaysong.com to find all of the background music your holiday movie needs to celebrate the season. Browse through hundreds of less distracting soundtrack selections to give your lengthy, pointless shots of a car driving the down-home holiday feel without forcing in all of those clunky, generic, and frankly uncalled for word jumbles recorded by some of a Canadian record label's least profitable or well-known musicians. The lyrics are too much. We're get, meaning the Amish in a second and it's like, fun everybody, let's have fun. Uh, no, let's shut the fuck up with the Miss Frizzle vocal track. This isn't the Magic School Bus holiday special, okay? This is Christmas at the goddamn Amish Bakery. And fun has never been the point for them. We are here to worship God and sit quietly in a circle sewing quilts, just white knuckling it through the winter with our unmedicated mental illnesses. Now that's the pacifist way of the Amish. Along with being incredible bakers, apparently, they get all of the lithium and SSRIs they need from good old fashioned, unpacked pasteurized milk and molasses and walking barefoot on a dirt floor. The soundtrack is threatening to steal Christmas throughout Christmas at the Amish Bakery. And I'm not just talking about musically. The only thing more cloying than these acoustically crafted pies and sweetbreads is the over-enthusiastic sound design, which tries very hard with the Foley sound effects to sweeten the on-camera action, which when done right, can really help lend some texture to the scene. Unfortunately, this movie's a little heavy handed with it. So the texture it lends is that of kitty litter or after I found some down by the well. Why does making a snow cone include the same audio as filling a sandbag? And why does that slice of Amish friendship bread sound like the unbandaging of my fungal infection? The Amish tend to be a very peaceful group, so it feels wrong that in every scene there's a horrific battle between the dialogue, the background music, and the exaggerated sound effects of daily living. Oh, Susie, I'd love to help you with your cookbook, but here in Amish country, all of our decisions are made by a group of elders known lovingly as the Pennsylvania Panty Snippers. Like, there was a lot of weird stuff going on just now, but I'm pretty sure there was one aspect that was the most weird and we're just not supposed to address it. Anyway, Sarah arrives home and despite apparently having left the Amish faith as a teenager, she's welcomed back by her sister Rachel and her dad is even like, we're happy to have you here. You can wear whatever you want. Like, thanks so much. She gets to work helping Rachel in the kitchen. He's like, you almost burned down the whole kitchen one. So you stay and watch. Even though she then reveals like the kitchen did burn down just a few years ago and she didn't tell her sister that. And that's why they now have all this modern machinery that although the Amish typically don't use electricity, they are allowed to here because the, they make the electricity themselves. I'm like, who do they got running on a treadmill out in the backwoods, gen like on the turnstile, making, making this happen? I don't know how electricity works. And I also am just like Sarah in that I don't know much about baking. Luckily, Rachel is giving us really helpful cooking tips like throughout the whole movie. Like you can learn some practical stuff here. No metal for sourdough. Sourdough is acidic, so best to use wooden spoons. It's the secret ingredient. <laughs> Vinegar and cherry pie. Lemon juice keeps them from turning brown. Wow, what fun folksy tips for the kitchen. I never would have thought about using vinegar and cherry pie or any other reason other than rinsing off sex toys. Thank you, Sister Wheelbarrow or whatever. Elizabeth's long sleeves. I told you, I don't know all the character names too well in this one. But what I do know is that it's these baked in home economics lessons that help combat the misconception that the Amish don't believe in vaccines or medicine or modern healthcare. Sure, they may want to live like it's Little House on the Prairie colonial times, but that doesn't mean they want to die from treatable illnesses like it is too. In fact, the Amish tend to value education and incorporate up-to-date science in a lot of aspects of improving their community. They have no problem with it, but I do. So you better keep those chemical reactions tucked up tight inside your bonnet, Sister Christian, before one of your little baking lessons crosses the line into witchcraft and I have to start persecuting anyone who has ever cooked or baked anything. Lemon juice on banana slices, it's just weird to me. 
mean? If God wanted to prevent things from turning brown, then somebody explain to me what's happening with my toenails because I've already tried squirting a lemon on them and all I did was pass out from the pain. So where is your God? Where is your God now? Seems to me like banana witchcraft is the most obvious accusation to make in this instance. Sarah notices Dean out the window. He's like this shrimpy little Englishman, which is the Amish way of saying non-Amish, who has been coming into the community with his young daughter and helping out as like a handyman for the last few weeks, even though he's not like the most handiest of men. And that leads Sarah to talk about why she doesn't have a man of her own. I realized that I have impossible standards. As someone who could get through dinner without checking their cell phone, the one who wants to go on walks with me and read, just enjoy being in each other's company. Nothing epitomizes heterosexual romance like a woman stating that she has impossible standards for men and then listing off the traits of someone who barely tolerates her as a person, takes her on walks twice a day like a dog, and demonstrates that they know how to read. The sister of Rachel is like, you do realize you just described an Amish man. Or just like any mature, emotionally available man. She said that her ideal husband has to like taking walks, not that he has to have a straw hat and a beard that's well-groomed like a leather daddy's who has never made another person climax outside of Rumspringa. But okay, sis, whatever you say. The amount of down-home, whole some Christmas fun that this movie features is frankly sickening. But I guess it's the season for that. Speaking of the season for sickness, that's particularly relevant because this is currently the season of the flu and now COVID-19, which means everybody should be getting vaccinated or boosted or actually COVID vaccines are no longer called boosters. They're just a vaccine, one that you should probably take forever now. The influenza vaccine helps millions of people stay out of the hospital every year, which helps free up those resources for people who are otherwise sick and injured. Up to 60% of flu cases are prevented. The healthcare system is already strained enough, so getting the flu vaccine is a great way to help out your community. As for COVID, the CDC recommends the Pfizer vaccine or the Biotech or Moderna brand for anyone six months and older. And an updated form of the Novavax vaccine was made in in October for people 12 and older. So again, they're no longer called boosters, but instead these updated vaccines are made to help prevent coronavirus variants that are currently circulating. You can get your COVID vaccine at the same time that you get your flu shot. Not everybody knows that. And if you're 60 years or older or have regular contact with infants, you should connect with the healthcare provider to talk to them about getting the RSV vaccine as well. Influenza, coronavirus, RSV. This is the first time that the US has had all three vaccines for all three of those major respiratory illnesses available at the same time, and that's a sigh of relief. Ha, <laughs> ha, ha. Get vaccinated though. Sarah briefly meets the Zoe, the 10 year old daughter who's homeschooled and is supposed to be like really precocious and inquisitive, but the performance comes off very flat to me, not living for it. And then she brings uh, Dean out some coffee and he's like, oh yeah, she's homeschooled because she has separation anxiety since her mom died. And um, I'm just here because I hate my life. Basically he's asking Sarah, why is she allowed to come back to the, the Amish faith even though she left apparently as a teenager? And she's like, oh, well, because I didn't break an oath. Thought you could use some hot coffee? Thanks. The Amish believe in the freedom of choice. So you're technically allowed to hold your mug that way and drink your coffee with that sound, but I can't guarantee it's a choice that would be sanctioned by our Christian God, and it may very well be the kind of behavior that lands you in hell. And I hesitate to even mention the absence of liquid from the inside of that mug. Pointing out the trope of empty cups in TV movies has become a trope in and of itself. And frankly, I hold the secret belief that I was the first to start this internet trend way back in my clip breakdown for queen size, but I don't know how to prove that, and I refuse to be challenged on it, so I guess talking about empty cups in movies is to me what believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God is to the Amish. But unlike the Amish, engaging with me on the topic will likely result in physical violence. If I can ever remember any of the orange belt karate moves I learned before giving up, or maybe just tap into some of my limited musical theater dance experience, kickball chain, you better watch it. But now let's get back to Dean's daughter, Zoe, who, as I mentioned, tragically lost her mother a few years earlier, which left her a little weird. What's the worst sound you've ever heard? This is Nice. Fascinating, was that the sound of the baby deer that killed your mom after your dad drove into it with his car? Kids are like sponges, aren't they? Just soaking up all of that trauma and then expressing it in the most annoying ways possible. I'm just kidding, it's okay to let kids be kids. And that's what I would wanna tell Zoe. And sometimes it's okay to let kids be kids, but with a touch of under eye concealer. And that's what I would want to tell the makeup artist on this movie. If I were the kind of person tacky enough to point out the congenital dark circles on a child actor, and there's no way to prove that I am. That little girl's messed up face 
is my the existence of heaven. Amen. Anyway, after much secret recipe stealing, the publishers have already put together this book. The Amish sisters on the cover being like, yeah, even though they later say the Amish don't have their photos taken ever. Another thing that they would never do is pose for a photo. By the way, the family bakery is closing because suppliers or distributors of their baked goods in the community is retiring. And Sarah realizes like, oh, you can sell your baked goods if you open it up to the Englishmen, the, like the wider community. They all love this Amish shit. And you can sell your quilt and blah, blah, blah. Rachel is like, okay, but we don't want to do a big corporation cookbook or whatever. We don't feel comfortable with that. She's like, well, what if we self-publish it and we sell hard copies of it here? We use old-fashioned printing presses, all of that old cobwebby sh that you love. She, she does pose the idea of going with the publisher to her sister and her sister's like, mm. But to her credit, Sarah backs off right away, even though it would help them with their money issues. We don't like the idea of partnering with big corporations. A successful cookbook could hit a major best-selling list. A major best-selling list? You mean like the upstate New York Times food recipe roundup? Or the Pennsylvania Dutch Oven Office of Affairs newsletter? Or the Alliance of the Amish Shama Lama Lama Amish good-selling cookbook collection? Those are the ones that I'm thinking of right at the top of my head. Who knows that? A major bestsellers list. So anyway, Sarah's like, okay, fine. Then we'll self-publish it. You can still make a ton of money. Everyone's excited. Um, oh, Zoe is in like the little sing-along festival for the, for Christmas. It's Christmas after all. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> okay, that kid is weird, but like not even in an Amish way. What? I said she's not Amish weird. She's weird for a like normal person who lives as though it's the present day. But like her mom died in front of her and she's still working through it type of weird. You know? So Dean was apparently the illustrator for this popular kids book series that he made with his wife. It ended abruptly when the wife died because he she was the writer of it. And he hasn't drawn a thing for children's books since. But now Sarah's like, we can't take pictures of our food. So would you be illustrating them for us, Mr. Man? And he's like, yeah, I think so. I actually do have one condition. I get to taste what I draw. So hike up that skirt, you holiday heretic, because daddy's about to draw that say No, no, he's drawing the desserts because again, Again, Amish hate cameras, which is maybe not true. From what I read, the Amish, A, can use cameras be, if it's a film camera because they don't rely on electricity, and B, they don't believe uh, that your soul will be stolen from a photograph, as many have said in the past, and they can have photos of them taken. It's just they can't pose for a photo because that lacks the humility that their faith requires. So I'm not really sure what they're trying to say with this. When you take a picture of a dessert, is it technically posing for that picture? Before this Christmas movie, I would have said no. No, but after Googling cherry pie pictures, I don't know what to tell you. She's serving But yeah, I guess these drawings that Dean did are good too. They're so realistic and they totally capture the warmth we're going for. Oh, so were you going for the warmth of a non-verbal death row inmate trying to communicate a request for his last meal? How are those drawings realistic? Does Sarah think that the AHA uh -huh music video for Take On Me was a documentary? Whatever, Dean says some other fatherly things like helping Rachel hold the new baby in like a way that's comforting. After going on many walks, Dean and Sarah are clearly falling for each other. And um, Sarah's gonna be a great stepmom, it seems like, cause they watch this little girl sing. what the actress who plays Zoe did to piss off the entire art department on this movie, but they are doing her dirty in every single shot. They said, good news, little girl, you get to dress like the old wise man carrying a box of myrrh. Oh, you're cold up there? Good thing we're giving you this fake beard and it's made from your hair once we cut it off your stupid head. I'm like, okay, take it easy. There's no need to mistreat and dehumanize the child performers. They're not the stars of a Nickelodeon series. Of course, the third act conflict could not come at a worse time. We have the boss get out of the car in Amish country and she's like, why haven't you gotten the book rights signed away? She's still under the impression that the book is going to be made and the whole family overhears it even though Sarah is immediately like, we're not doing the book. We've already made a, our own copy of it and we're selling it and the boss is like, well, I have to let you go. The sister and the dad are all like, we'll talk about this tomorrow. And Dean, for some reason, is the most incensed out of everybody. This cookbook betrayal that never was. Any of my drawings appear in a book other than the one I agreed to. I would never do that. That. I have to go. Bye, Sarah. God, Sarah, look what you did. Your behavior gave Dean the Christmas crazy face. Made him go all yuletide wide-eyed. He's like, wow, um, okay. I thought you were a good person, but apparently you helped your sister self-publish a cookbook? I just, 
I just, you might as well be the deer that killed my wife in the car accident that I caused. Try not to murder my wife again on your way out of Amish country. The next day, Sarah is talking to her sister and her dad and they're like, oh yeah, we knew you were here to do the cookbook thing. Like it wasn't hard to figure that out since you're a cookbook editor. And she's like, Dean will come around. But she goes home for Christmas and is like all on her own watching an electronic television. More sins from this one. Uh, Zoe and Dean are at Amish Christmas with, he has a present for her and he's like, would you make sure she gets this in Chicago? And the dad is like, sure. Something happens where Dean is like, she is a good person. I need to have a realization. And he drives six hours on Christmas day to go get her. And she opens the door and then they drive back. So this has been like a 12 hour in the car sort of thing. But apparently in the Amish world, they're like, and we have a second Christmas on the 26th to spend with friends and family. So they get to like all have Christmas together again now. And of course that sort of happy resolution calls for a celebration. One that only a wonky honky hyper lyrical song can provide. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Merry Christmas, team. I'm crazy about Christmas. That's all we get. Crazy about Christmas, fade to black. Yeah, we know. I mean, look how crazy for Christmas those two are. Practically feral for the festive season. Horny with holiday tidings, you might say. Standing all close to each other and refusing to even kiss until marriage. Like if they were any crazier for Christmas, they would be spraying pine scented hormones out of their glands all over the stockings. They would be staining the walls with their oily, mold cider scented piss. Like wild rabid creatures from the Christmas forest. I'm crazy about Christmas, but the rest of the year I'm fine. So don't instigate me around Christmas. I'll lose my goddamn mind. It all started at age three when I ate some poison mistletoe and it infected my childhood brain. Ooh, crazy about Christmas. That got a little autobiographical at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up this Christmas. I hope you all had an amazing holiday season and I look forward to spending even more time with you into the new year. Let me know what you thought of Christmas at the Amish Bakery. Thanks again to Natalie for suggesting this one. Make sure you give this video a big Big thumbs up if you want to see more like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm sledding into your house like a deer that killed your mom. And uh, I also have merch and a Patreon. Tomorrow I'll be doing a, a little chat session with my patrons over there. Um, so join if you want to join. Thank you so much for getting crazy about Christmas with me today. I will see you next time.